Ergo, I got blubbered. T-shirts with that phrase have become ubiquitous throughout the Empire. Everyone knows it refers to the Space Whale, a tourist trap located in the Nemo system. Yet, only those who have visited the attraction know the truth. Describing it as a space whale would be a stretch of the imagination. True, there is an oblong asteroid with one thick end tapering into a smaller one that orbits Ergo, Nemo 3. There are even locals who will argue for hours about its strong resemblance to an Earth whale. Yet the main draw really seems to be the shops and attractions set up to entice the wayward tourist who happens to be lured here. While the space whale may not live up to its billing, it is somehow fitting for the Nemo system. From Ergo, an ocean planet with vast oil resources but no remaining native life, to a system name that most assume is a reference to aquatics, but is actually an acronym for Norman, Ellis, Mao and Ochoa, surnames of the founding partners of Nemo Co, the company credited with discovering the system. The Nemo system is a place where things are not always what they seem. Even the system's discovery date has been called into question. Official records credit Deho Ochoa, who was then a partner in Nemo Co, with finding the system in 2364, but some believe he first visited the system in 2362, a discrepancy credited to corporate intrigue during humanity's unregulated early terraforming era. The controversy centred on Ochoa, who, in 2362, was a security contractor for the Tadmore terraforming concern in the Fora system. One day, co-workers lost contact with Ochoa while he was on a routine patrol. As a search party mobilised, Ochoa surfaced and then promptly quit without an explanation or logging his last day's flight path. That last detail went unnoticed by Tadmore management, who were overwhelmed by issues surrounding their botched terraforming of Fora 3. Exactly what Ochoa did that day eventually led to a lawsuit calling into question Nemo's discovery date. In 2364, the nascent Nemo Co. purchased all Fora-based terraforming platforms from Tadmore at a steep discount. Tadmore was desperate for credits to address legal problems and cut Nemo Co. a deal, believing they would have to shoulder the cost of disassembling the massive platforms to get them to fit through the system's medium-sized jump point. Yet, shortly after the purchase, Nemo Co. announced the discovery of an all-access jump from Fora to an entirely new system, which they promptly christened Nemo. An incredible stroke of luck, claimed Nemo Co. executives. For Tadmore, it was too big of a coincidence to ignore, particularly once they heard who found the new system. Deho Ochoa's discovery of Nemo sent Tadmore digging through his employment file, which prompted a review of his sudden and strange departure from the company. Eventually, Tadmore filed a lawsuit against Nemo Co, alleging Ochoa had discovered the jump to Nemo the day he quit, and they were entitled to a stake of Nemo Co's operations. Despite some circumstantial evidence, what Tadmore really needed was Ochoa's nav computer. However, Ochoa had sold his old Aurora and had no idea where it was. Tadmore investigators searched the known universe but were unable to find it. Lacking the evidence to prove their claim, Tadmore's lawsuit was thrown out of court and the company subsequently dissolved. The history of the Nemo system is entwined with Nemo Co in more ways than name. Even the system's pivot from oil provider to tourist destination originated with Nemo Co. They were the first to market the space whale to the universe and convert Ergo's outdated oil rigs into tourist destinations, at a cost that eventually sank the company, but planted the seed for future entrepreneurs. Despite their incredible luck in Nemo, the company suffered from misguided leadership and, failing to establish a foothold anywhere else in the Empire, slowly faded away. While Nemo Co. is no more, their namesake system is thriving. Much like the Space Whale, even though the system is not exactly what it seems, people continue to be intrigued by it. The closest neighbour to the system's F-type main sequence star is Nemo 1. Today, it is known as a protoplanet that lacks resources. Yet prospectors once thought it had potential, thanks to the microprobe. Selling itself as the next gen in resource detection technology, Microprobe's initial bounteous scans of Nemo 1 turned out to be horribly inaccurate when double-checked. Luckily, 
Microprobe's shoddy technology was exposed before prospectors wasted time excavating in the barrens of Nemo 1. Millennia of meteor strikes have sculpted a rugged surface on Nemo 2. Besides creating a visually dynamic expanse, the meteors have also brought the planet precious ores and minerals. Today, numerous mining operations have staked a claim on Nemo 2 to search for those valuable resources. Nemo 3 is a terraformed ocean world that has kept the Nemo system relevant to the Empire. Nemo Co quickly established itself on Ergo when scans revealed significant oil reserves under the ocean. Once terraforming was completed, massive oil rigs, many made from the decommissioned terraforming platforms, were built to extract the underwater resources. As pockets of oil were depleted, the rigs were converted into permanently habitable platforms with shops, restaurants and civil services to accommodate the high number of workers who wished to stay on planet after their contracts ended. In the late 27th century, a study conducted by the University of Mentor showed that on average, Ergo's residents lived longer than residents of other worlds and used words like peaceful and tranquil to describe the planet. This general perception of Nemo's idyllic and relaxing lifestyle spread throughout the empire and led to a booming tourism industry. Over the centuries, ambitious developers have even built luxury platforms geared specifically for tourists. Of course, the biggest mystery is how vast quantities of oil even got under Ergo's ocean. No native life existed on Ergo when humanity arrived, and researchers are still searching for any fossil evidence of what life once existed there. While exactly what happened is unknown, the most widely accepted explanation is that a millennia ago, an extinction-level event eradicated all native life. These unknown and long-gone organic species are who we have to thank for Ergo's oil reserves. To this day, the misperception that Ergo's ocean has life still exists, probably amplified by its association with the space whale. In fact, Ergo's tourism ads and brochures go to great lengths to dispel this notion, even specifically telling tourists not to bring fishing gear on their vacation and highlighting how much safer it is swimming in water void of anything that can eat you. I love NordVPN. I use NordVPN. I get money when you guys buy NordVPN. So use the links below, check out NordVPN, See if it's something that you actually want to get, nordvpn.com slash boardgamer. If you get it, I get money. Same with things like Toby Eye Tracker as well. Toby Eye Tracker, natively supported by Star Citizen. It is a great piece of kit. It's also 15% off until the 15th of May. Again, with the links below. May in Star Citizen is about fleets and Fleet Week and flying with friends. And we've partnered up with Lunar Wolves, a Star Citizen org, to give away a fleet of ships. Commenting on any of my videos during the month not only gets you a chance to win a Spirit C1, but also a Constellation Andromeda, a Vanguard Sentinel, and a Corsair, courtesy of Lunar Wolves. They'll each be going out to a different winner chosen randomly from the video comments. But wait, there is more. Sign up to the Lunar Wolves recruitment page link down below for a chance for even more ships including an rsi polaris with lifetime insurance and a hornet f7c mark ii winners of those will be selected randomly from eligible org signups Lunar Wolves welcome all that share their passion for adventure and love of star citizen you can learn more about them on their org page or at lunarwolves.org if you would like to further support our channel, please like, subscribe, comment, share these videos. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, and I would love you to, please consider becoming a Patreon or clicking that join button under my videos. It goes a huge way in allowing us to make daily content and keep the channel going. You'll get some exclusive content from that as well. Any time Zinn and I can actually put it out, as well as help evolve the channel with polls and suggestions and that sort of stuff. Thank you so much for watching to the end and have a great May. It's going to be a good one.